put the session. Thanks, Charles. <laughs> okay, so everyone, my name is Feriel Adam. Uh, I'm an, uh, an activist with the Climate Justice Charter Movement. And I also uh, work part time with COPAC. Um, we won't do a round of introductions, but when people do speak, they could just, uh, you know, give themselves a, a brief intro, but I will just uh, mention that we have uh, the COPAC team here. Um, we also have, which includes uh, Prof Satkar, we've got Awande Butelezi, and we've got Charles Simane, who are part of the COPAC team. We've got some of the students from BITS that we've been working with. Um, and we'll come back to them uh, in the agenda. We also have uh, Imran Velodia, who is um, a representative from WITS for today's uh, Climate Justice Charter meeting and assembly. Um, so I want to uh, hand over, because one of the key things is before you know, we hand over the, 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 the Climate Justice Charter and the memorandum, we, need an understanding um, of the, the urgency of where we're now and the climate science and climate change and how we, we're actually running out of time and, and running out of ways of, of to deal with it um, if we don't deal with it urgently. So I'm gonna ask people a few things though. If you have questions when people are speaking to maybe jot them down into the chat box. Also, if you can keep your, uh, yourself on mute unless you are speaking. Um, and yeah, that's basically it. Um, I'm handing over to Awande, who will give us a, a short um, discussion, well, short input into the urgency of climate change and the climate science. Awande, over to you. Thank you, Farrell. Good day, everyone. I'll just share my screen um, for a brief presentation. I just need uh, the sharing capabilities from the host. Thank you. The urgency of climate science and climate change. So in 2018, the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, uh, the IPCC, released their special report on global warming of 1.5 degrees Celsius. Basically what this report said was that, uh, well, this report rather, sorry, was a, a result of a collaborative, collaborative effort by 91 authors from 40 different countries, citing over 6,000 scientific references. It was a global effort. And its main findings were that for us to stop global warming at 1.5 instead of two degrees um, would actually help and benefit us from the increasing damage to ecosystems, it would help mitigate human health uh, problems, and it would also lead to uh, better planetary well-being, or better well-being on a planetary scale. What the report said was that a two degrees temperature increase could lead to the increase in the occurrence of extreme weather patterns, rising sea levels, decreased Arctic sea ice, coral bleaching, and a loss of ecosystems amongst a number of other harm, um, negative uh, impacts. Um, we have less than 10 years to limit the warming at 1.5 degrees, according to that report. So that was less than 10 years uh, in 2018. Um, and that's what it suggested or what it, it required for this target to be met is that we must have an expeditious reduction in emissions and rapid far reaching unprecedented changes in all aspects of society. Um, Prior to the release of this report, the 2016 Paris Agreement, which was negotiated at COP21 in 2015, uh, had been hailed by many or some as a landmark in multilateral climate change process because for the first time, uh, there had been a binding agreement across all nations into a common cause to uh, help push forward ambitious efforts to combat climate change uh, and its effects. Uh, but by 2019, uh, after the release of the 2018 IPCC report, it was clear that the majority of the carbon emission reduction pledges are uh, made for 2030 by the 184 countries under the Paris Agreements, um, that these, these uh, uh, pledges and these uh, targets were not enough to keep global warming below two degrees Celsius. Um, the UN 
FCCC uh, then released a report this year, um, which covers all the admission submissions that have been made up to the 31st of December last year. Uh, so these are all the new or updated nationally determined contributions, um, which represents around 30% of global greenhouse gas emissions. And the majority of these countries had increased their levels of ambition to reduce uh, emissions. But even though they had done so, the level of ambition that they made still wasn't enough. Um, and that it indicates that the changes in these countries' total emissions would be uh, very minuscule, less than 1% uh, in 2030 compared to 2010 uh, levels. Um, and the IPCC reports uh, indicates that the emission reduction range, which is required, uh, for us to stop heating at 1.5 degrees uh, should be around uh, minus 45% in 2030 compared to 2010. Um, so the climate science has been clear. It has shown the way we require deep transformation uh, and we need it now because time is running out. This is what the latest IPCC report has said, uh, which has been called the title Code Red for Humanity. Um, and just to sum it all up, as I've said, is that we are running out of time. Extreme weather is taking hold in every part of the world. We've seen this, uh, events of cyclones and hurricanes in the Americas, uh, flooding in parts of Germany, China, and we also have our own effects here on our continent. The atmosphere and the seas are warming at rates which are unprecedented in human history, uh, and only drastic cuts in greenhouse gas emissions this decade can prevent us from raising global temperatures to a disastrous levels. Now, when we look at our place in the world, South Africa and the African continent, uh, South African, the Southern African region is more vulnerable than most to climate change compared to other parts of the world. It's a climate hotspot. And this is for three particular reasons. The first being that it will be exposed to a comparatively stronger uh, climate change because the Southern African interior has warmed at about twice the rate of global warming over the last five decades. So even the 1.5 or two degrees levels at which these global agreements are trying to keep uh, warming to uh, will be a lot more for us than it is for other parts of the world. Um, our part of the world, our part of the African continent lacks coping capacity um, Southern African region is made up of developing countries which do not have uh, the right level of disaster management systems or infrastructure or money to spend on adaptation and our economies are very sensitive to changes uh, in the climate, particularly the agriculture and the tourism industry. And thirdly, Southern Africa is a dry and warmer region than most um, and it will only become more warmer and more dry. And when a dry and warm region becomes more dry and warmer, uh, our options for how we adapt with regards to uh, these conditions becomes less and lesser. Um, so if with the three degrees uh, level of global warming on which our current trajectory is pushing us towards, uh, we will see increase in multi-year droughts, heat waves, the length of these heat waves, and a frequency of other severe weather impacts, which will obviously um, negatively impact our maize and uh, and cattle industries. So there's a little illustration there which uh, uh, kind of indicates the rate at which warming will spread around this region. And even though this uh, region of the continent is likely to become more dry under future climate change, uh, we can still uh, expect some you know, extreme rainfall events uh, which will occur more and more frequently. We've seen this off the coast of Mozambique and how it filters into our country. Um, and although Southern Africa is likely to become more drier, um, we can expect more of these kind of events happening across this region. Um, in our response, we require both mitigation and adaptation. Mitigation is for us as human beings to reduce the sources or enhance the sinks, uh, the capture of greenhouse gases. Adaptation is the adjustment to processes um, that uh, to actual or expected climate and its effects. So mitigation and adaptation pathways are not necessarily politically neutral also. Um, they have to be transformative, particularly in our region of the world. Um, they require a change in the design of the ways in which um, 
we fundamentally are uh, the, the, the practices that are fundamentally making us vulnerable to climate risk in the first place. Uh, we have to rethink completely how we do things. Um, and examples of these are transitioning to socially and community owned renewable energy, enhancing access to climate jobs and building a new food system based on food sovereignty. Forward to the Climate Justice Charter and a deep just transition to sustain life. Thank you. Thank you so much, Awande. Um, I think that was very useful uh, in terms of just setting out the science and you know the urgency of it. So um, yeah, if people do have any you know points of clarification, comments, please uh, either raise your hand or put it into the chat. But we're going to move on because of time, and I'm going to hand over to Vish for just a, a very very short uh, background to the climate justice chat. Uh, thank you, Feriel, and thank you to Wits University for engaging with us today. For those of you who don't know me, I'm an academic at Wits University, but I also chair the board of the Cooperative and Policy Alternative Center, COPAC. Uh, COPAC is one of the co-founders of the Climate Justice Charter movement and process and is coordinating its campaigning work. I'm going to be very brief to locate the background of the charter and, and where we're going. The Charter comes from different points of struggle uh, of the many in South African society. The first has got to do with the worst drought on record in the history of the country, circa 2014 till the present in parts of the country. When the drought struck, we formed the South African Food Sovereignty Campaign because we realized that this crisis was hitting people very, very hard. Hunger was worsening in society. From a, from a drought speak out to hunger tribunal, uh, to a march in 2016, a bread march, where we handed over a memorandum to Wits University together with 8,000 signatures, wanting a zero carbon, zero waste, zero hunger university, uh, to the point where we realized we needed the Climate Justice Charter. And we worked intensively towards that. Again, just before COVID-19, we also reminded Wits about the demands we made and included the imperative of divestment. So that's the one place where the charter was born. The other place where the charter was born was the concerns of children and young people. In 2011, I took 120 of my students to the COP summit in Durban, and we marched in the streets for climate justice. But since then, uh, we've seen very, very important, uh, uh, if you like, emergence of a new layer of youth and children activists who are deeply concerned, who are, who are completely disillusioned with the failure of political leadership around this issue. We saw it in 2018, we saw it in 2019, and these young people uh, have basically made their mark. These are not Greta Thunbergs. These are young people who've reached their own conclusions on the climate problem, and they really want to see transformative action now. And it's their fears, it's their dreams, it's their desires that also gave birth to the Climate Justice Charter. The third place that the Climate Justice Charter comes from is actually from collaboration with climate scientists, including at Wits University at the GCI. The climate scientists there, and as the one that's alluded to it, have warned us and have translated the climate science for the South African context. And the most recent um, kind of installment, uh, an interpretation of the recent IPCC report by Francois Engelbrecht, is that we are facing a day zero in the context of Gauteng, and Wits is in Gauteng. We cannot ignore this. We are facing more extreme heat waves. We are possibly facing cyclonic impacts and definitely a food system crisis as the climate crisis worsens. James Hansen, one of the leading climate scientists in the world, has also raised the alarm bell very loud. He did it in 1988, and he's doing it again as we go to the COP in Glasgow. And he's saying we are facing a two degree overshoot by 2040. And that means we are running out of time. So climate science is on our side. And that has also given birth to the charter. And then of course, uh, finally, the charter comes out of community labor grassroots struggles around the need for alternatives, struggles against extractivism, struggles around waste, struggles around solidarity economy and creating jobs um, and so on. So it's really, uh, if you like an embodiment of the alternatives that, that our society wants for the deep just transition, for the kind of decarbonization, for the kind of systemic adaptation to regeneration we need. We took the charter, we launched it on, on, on August 28th last year by our leading eco-feminists in the country. We took it to parliament on October 16th, World Food Day with the demand that it be adopted by our parliament. 
Uh, and up to now, we have not heard, but we are returning. We have brought the charter here today because we are deepening this process. There are 248 organizations that support this charter. We're hoping WITS will support the charter. We're hoping other universities will adopt the charter. We're hoping schools will adopt the charter. We're hoping workplaces and communities. So this is the start of that process of deepening support for the charter so that climate justice is central to the deep just, deep just transition in South Africa, which we need urgently. Thank you, Vish. Thanks for the background. I think that, uh, yeah, it kind of very succinctly covered the history of the chart and how it it developed and that it wasn't just uh, a few people writing it, but it was a very, it was a collective, it was consultative, it was a whole process. And I think that is very important because it took in all voices. Um, and so just to, to give you an idea of, of the kinds of information in the uh, charter itself, I'm going to ask uh, Nko Susana and Mosibudi to give us a brief overview of uh, the charter. You have a few minutes. So you may also want to just give a brief little info about yourself. No problem. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Nkosazana Makoti. I am part of the WITS chapter of the Climate Justice Charter Movement, as well as the Vice Chairperson of the Science Faculty Council. Um, so I'm just going to go into it uh, so I don't take too much of your time. As Africans, we live together on a vast and beautiful continent where the human story began. More climate shocks and ecological crises will result in more suffering and more pandemics. For the majority, particularly the workers, the poor, people with disabilities, the landless and the vulnerable. This charter aims to advance an awareness that we thrive and coexist on one planet. It, is, it aims to inspire a break with the thinking that caused the crisis and that reinforces the obsession with growth, progress and domination. It also aims to reconnect with an earth-centered con conception of what it means to be human. It also deepens the, what's this? It also aims to deepen co cooperation, overcome the crisis of corporate-centered, corporate capital leadership, strengthen up my Sorry, Nkosazana, do you want to switch your video off? Maybe the connection will be better. Thank you. No problem. Great, we can hear you again. You can carry on. Oh, no, I meant, um, I finished my section. I was referring to my colleague, Mosibudi, who can continue from after me. OK, thank you, sorry. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Musiburi Mulukome. I am a student at Wits University. I was helping Ngosazane with the initiative to push the Wits Climate Justice Charter movement on campus. So I will be talking about um, the principles for deep just transitions and the systemic alternatives for transformative change. The Climate Justice Charter consists of the principles for deep just transitions, and that includes climate justice, social justice, ecocentric living, participatory democracy, socialized ownership, international solidarity, decoloniality, and intergenerational justice. Another aspect that the charter includes to achieve, to achieve its goals is the systemic alternatives for transformative change. And that includes democratic and participatory deep just transition plans, socially owned and community-based renewable, renewable energy. And this is done through the rapid phase out of fossil fuels, feeding ourselves through food sovereignty, democratize the water commons, enjoy life through working less, eco-mobility and clean energy public transport systems, zero waste and simple living, eco-social housing buildings and transition towns, moving beyond mainstream economics, the rich must pay their ecological debt. Knowledge is crucial for survival. Emergency, holistic, and preventative health care, and the rights of nature and natural climate solutions. And also climate justice conscious, uh, climate conscious media, sorry. Thank you. 
Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Budi and Mkosasana for doing that. Um, I see a hand up, it's Sandra Mendoza. Do you wanna say something? Okay, if, uh, if not, we will carry on with the program. Um, I see that there have, has been a request for, the, for uh, a one day's presentation. He's, he said he will email it to people uh, and he will also try to upload it to the chat here. In the meantime, if you want to look at the charter, if you don't have a copy, Charles has just put in the link to the charter in uh, all 11 languages um, that we have done. So, in, so as we move forward in the agenda, I want to now hand over the um, reading of the memorandum. So I want to hand over to, um, I think it's Nishka and Noor, who are going to read the memorandum as well as hand over the um, charter to uh, Imran Velodia from WITS. But I would like to suggest that um, after you hand, well, put your videos on and then after you hand over, if we could all put our videos on so that we could, you know, engage a little bit more like a real handover rather than a virtual one. So if I can hand over to Nishka and Noor to read the memorandum, that would be great. Hi everyone, um, my name is Nishka. I am a VIT student and I am also uh, the head of Amnesty uh, VIT's environmental committee. So I'm going to read the first part of the demands and then my colleague Noor will read the uh, second part. So in 2016, the South African Food Sovereignty Campaign and the WITS Inala Forum handed over a memorandum of demands and a petition signed by 8,000 students and workers to WITS University. We demanded a zero hunger, zero waste and zero carbon university. On the 17th of March 2020, Climate Justice Ch Charter, CJC, and food sovereignty activists again called on WITS to act on these urgent issues, including divesting from fossil fuels. On the 28th of August 2020, the Climate Justice Charter was launched in South Africa by some of South Africa's leading eco-feminists and is endorsed by 248 organizations and growing. The CJC comes out of six years of campaigning during one of the worst droughts in the history of the country by the South African Food Sovereignty Campaign and work with droughts affected communities. It also emerged out of a year and a half of deep dialogue with key constituencies, think pieces by activists and online submissions by public. On, 16th of, on the 16th of October 2020, it was handed over to South Africa's parliament, parliament, together with a climate science future document prepared by WITS's leading climate scientists, and a set of demands from 72 communities for an end to pollution, water stress, hunger and climate harm. The South African Parliament has been called upon to adopt the CJC in accordance with section 234 of the constitution, which provides for charters to be adopted. The recent reports from the UN IPCC dealing with the physical science basis of climate change highlights that catastrophic climate change has begun and extreme weather shocks in relation to droughts, floods, heat waves, hurricanes, and wildfires will intensify. Sea level rise is also expected to accelerate as feedback loops increase. The WITS Global Change Institute also predicts a day zero event for Harting, more intensive heat waves, cyclonic impacts on South Africa and major food challenges facing the country. The South African state is corrupt, facing a legitimacy crisis and is still wedded to coal and fossil fuels in its integrated resource plan oil and gas bill for offshore extraction and fracking and gas-based car power ships. Performative policies and rhetoric do not measure up to the challenge of a country and region heating at twice the global average. In this decade, South Africa is likely to be at a three degree Celsius when the global average overshoots 1.5 degrees Celsius. This will be catastrophic. 
South Africa needs to be placed on a democratic climate emergency footing now. Every institution, big and small, every community and workplace has to embrace the challenges of decarbonization and systematic adaption as part of a deep, just transition. This has to be guided by the principles of climate justice and the plurivision vision of the Climate Justice Charter to ensure that those most vulnerable and those least responsible do not experience disproportionate impacts. Delaying merely makes the problems worse. WITS has been responsive to our calls for a food sovereignty center and pathway at the university. A lot has been achieved to move closer to a zero hunger university, but a lot more has to be done together. COVID-19 and the July violence has revealed how desperate the situation actually is in our country. Um, Noor, you can, you can take it from here. Sure, thank you, Nishka. Um, so hello everyone, my name is Noor Ahmed. I'm currently a master's student at FITS and I'm also an intersectional activist. Uh, I'm also currently the co-chair for Amnesty International VITS. Um, so just carrying on with the memorandum. Furthermore, we call for VITS to be a climate justice leader in society by adopting the Climate Justice Charter as soon as possible to guide its strategies, policies and role in the deep just transition to establish an inclusive deep just transition forum, which includes students, administrators, academics, workers, local governments and community organizations um, in order to develop a democratic deep just transition plan for the university with clear targets and mechanisms to achieve zero waste, zero hunger, zero carbon, and more generally, the vision of the Climate Justice Charter, to intensify support for the WITS Food Sovereignty Center and to ensure that the maintenance of the food sovereignty commons, such as the gardens and the fruit tree forests, becomes integral to how gardening services function, to ensure climate crisis education is mainstreamed within the university curriculum across all departments and faculties, including the promotion of more inter and transdisciplinary research, to divest from fossil fuels like Harvard and many other universities have done, to lead by example and ensure all universities in South Africa adopt the Climate Justice Charter and follow its lead through universities of South Africa, and to ensure the Academy of Science of South Africa supports the deep just transition with relevant research. So I'm just waiting. I can't really send the memorandum in the chat until I get permission from Hose to do that. Okay. I think in the meantime, if we can, you know, start putting our videos on so that we could all see each other in terms of the handover. Um, I also think that it would be, it's been really good to see that there are students from uh, all across the country that are on today and we welcome them all. We hope that they're gonna take this charge to their universities as well. Um, I just wanna to wait to see if Charles has been able to give you, Charles, have you been able to manage that to give Noor some access? Or Nishka, whoever's gonna be putting the thing. Charles, okay, Charles will post the memorandum onto the chat. Okay. And while we wait for that, I think I'll just add some other comments. You know, firstly, um, thank you to all the students who made this possible. Thank you for the organizing, the constant support. Um, and I think it's it's an important uh, note that it's not just FITS at the moment, it's a lot of students. And then I also want to thank Imran for your time and for being part of this. Um, and it, it shows us that, you know, that it is important and uh, we respectfully um, acknowledge your attendance. Uh, I just want to mention while we're waiting for Charles to upload, just to mention some of the other activities that we'll be having um, this month or later this year is um, the 16th of October is the World Food Day of Food. And once again, we re reorganizing uh, activities. So it's we have localized activities, localized actions, uh, wherever you are around climate change, around food sovereignty. Um, and so if you want to be involved in that, please, you know, contact us, contact, uh, you've got our emails and uh, let us know if there's something you'd want to be part of. We've already sent out um, kits, you know, with t-shirts, booklets, etc. cetera. Um, I think what, I can't even remember how many we sent them out to uh, groups and organizations across the country who are organizing um, 
activities and actions. So that's something. Um, we also want to remind you, you know, we have a petition and the words that you were, you were reading out now, the, the memorandum, the charter itself, um, we needed to get further than just our students. We needed to get it. We've got quite a, we've got, I think, 5,000 signatures or 6,000 signatures. We want to get it to 10,000. So it would be great if you can share it in your networks, share it with your groups. Um, I think we'll also, we'll email, because we've got, we'll have a list of all the people who participated. We will email the petition to you so that you can send it out. Um, and, you know, there are other students on, on this talk. There's University of Pretoria, I see. There's University, I think there was Cape Town, UCT, KZN. Um, we're happy to have discussions with you as well to take the, take the charter to your universities. I think it must be it must come, you know, as students. I just read an article now, I don't know if anyone else saw it about the high levels of um, actual depression and uh, emotional uh, uh, effect that climate change is having on, on people. And so I think it, it's a real thing and we need to acknowledge that as well. Um, I just wanna check again with Charles, have you put the memorandum on? I can't see it. Oh, okay. Sorry, we're having a problem with this, putting the, the memorandum. So it's going to be uh, like everything virtual right now. It's going to be a, a symbolic handover. So I'm going to hand over to either Noor or Nishka or any of the students who would like to address Imran and, um, you know, just to say that we're handing over the, the charter and we're handing over the, the memorandum. And then Imran, if you would like to, you know, after that, maybe address us and, and, and just give us a, a bit uh, input as well. So I don't know who's doing the hand of Anur or Nishka or Gossazana, <laughs> one of you. Um, Gossazana, maybe, maybe you can do it. All right, um, okay. we officially have brought the memorandum to you and we hope to get an official response to you, from you in due course. Um, if you have any brief comments now, we'd appreciate some, but um, we will hope to get an official response from you soon. Thank you. Right. So let me thank all of the speakers and let me say that on behalf of the vice chancellor, I'm, I'm quite pleased to receive the memorandum. I will make sure to pass it on to the vice chancellor and to uh, uh, table the um, memorandum at the next senior executive team um, um, meeting at the university. Um, and we will, uh, we will then uh, kind of respond appropriately. Um, I do want to use the opportunity to just make three kind of set of uh, three kind of sets of remarks. The first is as as the the kind of speakers before me have all highlighted. I think the the signs of 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 the climate uh, 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 the signs of the climate issue is pretty indisputable. We we we. We know that the implications are, are kind of pretty serious, uh, kind of serious enough to um, to have a, 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 a kind of fundamental change on our lives, and that that time is short, and that there's a a, a, a kind of really urge a kind of urgent need uh, for us to act on uh, that science. Kind of as a, 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 a kind of university, of course, we uh, kind of strongly believe in science, um, and we're strong supporters of that, of of kind of off the views on uh, both the need for urgent attention um, and also on the 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 findings of the various IPCC reports. Uh, my kind of second remark is really, while there's not a lot of dispute about the science. Um, I think the real 
kind of challenges um, on how we we manage uh, the the kind of important transition that has to be made. There are kind of at that level huge inequalities, both in the impact and in the costs uh, of kind of off that transition, both between the developed world and the developing world, and then within the developing world itself uh, among different classes. And I think the, 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 uh, the kind of challenge is to now take the science and to manage that transition um, in a way that is, that is going to be equitable and is, is, is kind of going to allow us to make the transition in a way where, uh, where, where the, the costs and the benefits of that transition um, are shared equally. Um, I want to just lastly assure you that the university takes these issues pretty seriously. We're in the process of uh, kind of developing our next strategic plan. Um, and I can assure you that the issues of climate change um, and these questions about the uh, uh, these kind of questions about the just transition um, and the social and economic dimensions of that are uh, uh, kind of really core to the university's approach to uh, to to confronting the challenges, but also uh, working with all the communities in in uh, kind of in our universities to manage that transition in an equitable way. Let me then stop and kind of hand it back to you, Chet. Thank you very much. Um, I think that we look forward to your response. It's very, it's very, you know, we're very excited that, of course, this will be tabled. I think at this point, it's quite clear that climate change is such, such an urgent issue. We can't not be talking about it. And I do hope that other students would take it um, to their universities. There's one thing I forgot to talk about, which I think is, is a way, uh, it's the arc, um, the arc of South Africa. And what we're doing with this is, um, and we will share in the emails, the links to all of this, because it basically each one of us uh, could add photographs into the arc of South Africa. Basically, it could be a good thing, you know, the beauty of, of our world. Um, and it can be anything that you think is important. It could be a young person, or it could be, you know, um, a cat, or you know, but anything that you think is part of of this and of of, of a glow of a broader environment, and that will in, be impacted by climate change, and you want to preserve it in some way or another, to take those photographs. Everyone has phones, and to upload it. Um, we've been using it. We've already got uh, pictures that we are going to go to parliament. We wanted to go to parliament on the 16th of October this year, but we can't do that because of elections. <clears throat> so we're going to go on the 9th of November, I think we said, and we're going to hand over. So I think you would like this. We're going to hand over some of the pictures that were taken as saying that this is, this is, our, this is our lives that we're playing around with. It's important to preserve. It's important to take note of climate change. We're also going to hand over symbolic gifts, right? So uh, for example, um, because we know that climate change is gonna affect our food supply, we wanna hand over seeds or uh, a floating, you know, those things you swim with, those floating things because of floods. And we, we're thinking about those kind of creative ideas to hand over to parliament. So we're forcing them to discuss this. So it's not only universities we have to go to, but I think universities, as you said, um, Imran, is that, you have a role to play. You are key to, to talking about science. You are at the front line of education and educating people about the uh, intersectionality of climate change. And I think that is, is a role that universities can play by endorsing the Climate Justice Charter. It will force parliamentarians to listen um, to what young people are saying and to what all South Africans are saying about climate change. On that note, I really want to thank everyone for their participation today. I think it's um, it's really uh, so good to see everyone. I, it's a pity we can't do these things in person anymore, hopefully soon. Um, but thank you very much, Imran, for your time and for listening to us and for taking this forward um, with us. 
and we hope other universities will do the same. Thank you, everyone. Sure. Fish, yeah. would you like to say some last words? Thank you. Thank you to everybody. Okay. Thank you, comrades. We can now switch our videos off and leave. Thank you. Bye. Yes, everyone. Bye. Bye.